Hello everyone, it's Dalcom coming at ya with another video. Today we've got a very, very special video that I am super excited about, but also super nervous about as well. For some reason, I have gotten it back into the brave big world of Mario Kart. It's been coming up in my recommended feed. I, I just, all of a sudden, it's just poof, and it's there. So that gave me the perfect idea for a video. As many of you know, I host the Jack Live radio show, normally on Sundays from 9 till 11 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on Station Head, link in the description. And I thought that I would do a crossover event that no one, I guarantee, no one has ever done. Yes. We are going to be doing a radio show and playing Mario Kart races at the same time. The heaven above, please, please shine down on me. Uh... We are going to be doing eight races and eight different segments, so stay tuned. Also, the link to the archive of the radio show that this is going to be on will also be in the description as well. If you wanted to watch this or listen to it, or maybe both, this is going to either turn out very well or very, very badly. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into today's video. We are here, we're live on the Drag Life Radio Show. We are live here on, well, we're pre-recorded here on the YouTube channel. But I kind of we're doing this. Okay, um, alright, let's get this, uh, show on the road, shall we? My main man, Donkey Kong, will be helping us out. Of course. Oh my god, what is the randomizer gonna choose? Alright, guys, first segment up off the bat is Headline Roundup. Let's get started with the Mario Kart Jerry Live Show Radio Show right now! So... Rainbow Rock, you're kidding! Oh my god, you're literally kidding me! We start off with the hardest track! Alright, well, at least we got time to do Headline Roundup. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Headline... Oh, I can't start now, ready? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to Headline Roundup! Beep, 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 beep. Oh, I can't talk and play Mario Kart at the same time. Uh, this is the part of the show where we take five... I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Oh no! No, you go! What are you doing? <laughs> oh my god, get it together. Alright, here we go. This is the part of the show where we take five headlines from around the world uh, in rapid fire succession, except not now because this is Rambo Road. <laughs> Alright, first up on the ticket, we have from our friends over at Huffington Post. Malaysia, ooh, <laughs> Malaysian primate borrows phone and takes selfies. A little bit more detail in this story in just a moment as it loads. I'm just going to use this here, by the way. Alright, a Malaysian student whose cell phone was stolen while he was sleeping tracked down a coal pit. Sure, that's a word. A monkey who took a photo and videos with the device. Oh, with the device. Before abandoning it. Sarah's Rock High 20 said Wednesday that his phone was missing from his bedroom when he woke up on Saturday. He found his phone chasing under his bed, but there was no sign of the robbery in his house in the southern Johar state. Oh, no. No, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh my god, the on the road. Next headline in. Headline roundup. Rat earns gold medal in Cambodia for landmine detection. One, but one rat. Oh, they get a bad rap, especially for being dirty. But this rat redeemed his species on Friday, becoming the first rodent to receive a gold medal for his work in sniffing out un exploded mines and saving countless lives 
and Cambodia. Next headline is AI robot serves up. This is very hard to do. How how am I in nine? I don't say this. Is, I don't know what that is. All right. Yes. I, AI robot serves up do that. Oh, I fell off. <laughs> in Seoul of South Korea, Aglo Kim, a trolley-like robot which uses artificial intelligence is delivering food to customers in a restaurant in Seoul to minimize human contact. A single mushroom in ninth, hello? Uh, <laughs> during the pandemic to ensure minimum human contact and social distancing. Shortly after customers order through a touch screen on a table, and the 1.25 meter tall robot delivers their food in style. Next headline. Oh my gosh, I just got bombed. Next headline. Massachusetts man dies of overdosing on black licorice, a case report says. They say too much of a good thing can be harmful, which is the case. For one Massachusetts man who loves black licorice and it costed him his life. Finally, in Headline Roundup, I'm gonna get lost. Headline Roundup, Sir David Attenborough, oh, I might not get lost, bre breaks records on Instagram after he joined. I got 11th. <laughs> Oh, the nature has made his debut on the platform uh, with an uh, Instagram television video of himself. Oh my gosh. Guys, Headline Roundup is the craziest of segments. If we can get through that, we can get through anything. Now we're reviewing Cats and Dogs 3. God, and we're playing Desert Hills. Why didn't we not have an easy track like this on <laughs> Headline Roundup? Hello? Alright, review, review, review. Alright, uh, this movie... Uh, uh, review is 1 out of 10 uh, and it says no it ruined another franchise it's 1 out of 10 the reviewer says this is the worst movies in the cats and dogs franchise what a horrible movie I suggest you do not watch uh, I suggest to all of you to watch this and save your precious time oh not to watch this and save your precious time <laughs> uh, but still the first movie is the best the second is average but this is so unwatchable uh, bad music composing bad CGI terrible acting no old characters damn young characters right here nothing else to say about this nonsense well this review is simple enough it gets the point across I guess that it is a bad movie and that you should not watch it. Like, that's, you know, here we go. Um, and to balance things out, we are going to do a 10 out of 10 movie. Yes, someone on IMDb rated this movie a 10 out of 10. The title of the review is uh, Name a Better Film. Uh, no, Oscar Bait is the title of the film. Oscar Bait? Question mark? 10 out of 10. Uh, it says, oh, I'm just going to use this to do that. Okay, cool. Uh, name a better... And then I get shocked. Cool! Name a better film. I dare you. This review all right. With a complex plot. <laughs> it's Cats and Dogs 2. A uh, 3, rather. Uh, oh, I got blue shot. In second. Uh, with a complex plot and an enduring characters, this film is a perfect piece of cinema. <laughs> The cinematography is phenomenal. I compare it to Nolan? Hello? Uh, but it would have been sold to Cats and Dogs 3, Paul's Unite. The only film I think it could be possibly stand up to this one is Cats and Dogs The Revenge of Kitty Galore, which is where the party started came from. And cinema can end now. It can't get any better. Everyone go home. Is this person... Serious? I think we've got one, time for one more review. Uh, one out of ten. We left the cinema one hour. Kids bored us. 
asleep. Huh? <laughs> what? Probably the worst film... I'm out of control. The worst film I've possibly seen this decade. Poor plot, no humour, kids six and three, thoroughly bored and underwhelmed, my wife and I falling asleep. How did this make it to cinema? Trust me, it's terrible. I did okay that, right? It's like a third? Hello? <laughs> we're doing Cooper Cape, and we're talking about how Carl Stefanovic got arrested as the show wrapped the other day. Here we go, oh my gosh. This is a long track too, so. All right, Carl Stefanovic arrested as show wraps? By the way, I want to say for the record, and we're already having a generic live rant. <laughs> we love a good generic live rant, right? Oh, Donkey Kong! <laughs> it's not what I wanted. Anyway, so I am a little over... As you know, long-time fans know, I am not the biggest fan of clickbaity titles. Right? So, I thought when I read this that Carl Stefanovic got arrested for, you know, committing a crime. Nope! Turns out that today host Carl Stefanovic found himself, yet again, in the back of a... Uh, what is going on? Back of a New South Wales police van the other morning as he was quote-unquote arrested. Oh, yikes. Quote-unquote arrested for losing the New Recruit Fruitness Challenge. Both him and co-host Ali Langdon underwent a series of fitness challenges including a vertical jump test. Ooh, good pull. Uh, and a I got rope test and an agility test. It came weeks after Langdon said that she thought Sergeant Langdon had a good ring to it. The two hosts were neck and neck, and then Carl Stefanovic scored a 57, while Langdon scored a 40. However, Stefanovic lost marks, letting out a yard loud woo, prompting Detective Chief Inspector Dean Lindsay to note the very excitable on his scorecard. After the break, Langdon was revealed the winner. She scored 14 seconds on the agility test compared to Stefanovic's 30-something. I'm going to use this here. Uh, <laughs> a less exciting Stefanovic was found on the hood of the police car. Stefanovic peered out the window as the sirens... Whoa, what is happening? Sirens. <laughs> I didn't do it. It wasn't me. When the camera cut to today, extra host uh, David Campbell, he said he wasn't surprised at the arrest. On behalf of Channel 9, we knew this day was coming. We all knew this day would come. Oh, come on, Donkey Kong. Uh, ah, Donkey Kong! We didn't... What? We didn't know how it would be. Yeah, well, to be fair, how's David Ovex been in a lot of trouble over the years? Has he been arrested, though? This is the thing. I don't know if he's been technically arrested for for anything. Oh my god, did Toad literally just fall off in a mega rush room over a gap that is the size of his car? I guess so. Um, I don't know how I I don't know how I feel I don't know when to use this mega mushroom either. I'm just gonna use it here. Um a golden rather, mega mushroom. Wow, Dale. I don't know how I feel about uh, TV show pranks like this also. Like, it kind of brings a normalization to being arrested a little bit. Not gonna lie. So, don't know. I think a producer was just like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if he got arrested? Ha ha ha. But my problem also is the clickbaity titles. That's what I have issue with. Am I gonna get second? Hello? Um, but, you know, I suppose they need clickbait titles. We are moving on to the BuzzFeed quiz right now. Bowser's Castle. God damn it. <laughs> Why? All right, this BuzzFeed quiz is probably brought to you by our friends over at BuzzFeed. At least we've got a longish kind of track to do this, though. I'm kind of glad. All right. This is to find out what cake I am through a whole bunch of weird and wonderful questions. So first up, we're going to pick 
our favourite animal. Uh, horse, fox, cat, dog, panda, or parrot. So, oh, where am I? Hello? Oh, what is going on? Hello? There we go. Horse, fox, cat, dog, panda, parrot. I... That's also just fun to say. This has a... This is a random phrase. I'm gonna go panda. Uh, we're gonna pick an outfit. Oh god, I have to describe these outfits too. Uh, uh, crop top and jeans, red jacket, white shirt, white umbrella, a uh, dad cardigan, hipster dad cardigan <laughs> with an undershirt, uh, businessman, or casual valley girl. <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> Those descriptions are literally everything, though. Ooh. I do like a good dad cardigan, but I think my style of... Ooh. Good use of the shock, but I'm gonna... Ooh, no, I'm not gonna use that mushroom. Oh, King Blue shock dodged. Uh, I'm gonna go the non-hipster dad cardigan. Alright, pick a colour. Red... White, pink, brown, rainbow, or yellow. Um, oh, that's rough. Uh, I have to go. I have to go pink, right? All right. Next up, and I think actually, I think this next one is the giveaway for the quiz. Um, pick a dessert. We've got ice cream, candy, chocolate. Cupcakes, uh, macaroons, or I think that's just pie. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Oh, what the hell? What? I'm gonna go with ice cream. What's your favorite type of book to read? Uh, is none an option? <laughs> I think none is an option. Ah, final lap! Okay. Uh, I think none is an option. Uh, graphic novel. Pick a hair colour, it doesn't have to be yours. Brown, red, ombre, anything colourful, blonde or black. Uh, I'm gonna go... Oh, I quite like my hair colour if I'm being completely honest. I'm gonna go... Oh, this is gonna help me out a lot. I'm gonna go with brown. And then finally, we have to pick a scent, but we're gonna do that kind of towards the end near the finish line. What is a blue shell going to do for me? I'm in seventh. Oh, you jacked my box. Alright. Citrus, cinnamon, vanilla, roses, fresh, something, or coffee. I'm going to go coffee. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, the cake it gave me is actually correct. I am Funfetti Cake. Alright, the end. That was a terrible race. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to some more news. Alexa hardware features coming at you right now. Oh boy. And we're doing another Mario circuit. Hello, five of eight. So we're getting, we're getting close. Oh, cool. All right. Alexa hardware launched on September 24th and it is making a huge hit. Hello, did I get an item box? Hello. Featuring enhanced Echo speaker displays and other voice driven devices for its smart homes. It's expanding on its stretch of covering 140,000 smart homes. The world is progressing in the field of innovative ideas with the help of Alexa driven devices. That's a good pull. <laughs> Before the event, whoa, hello, early shock. Uh, David Rose, uh, president, uh, Amazon vice president of Smart Home Alexa Mobile, uh, said the smart hardware is becoming independent day by day. It was soon working on henches without even asking, which, by the way, that is terrifying. The fact that it's going to start acting on its own. Uh, it will also listen to sounds and react as well. That was a terrible play. 
uh, with an update of Alexa God. Alexa God Plus. When Alexa was introduced, the smart homes were in demand, and over the last couple of years, uh, Amazon has rolled out many of its features. Alexa Guard is one of them. With this feature, it'll be a safeguard to your home, and it will send a notification of your alert on your home if you are home away. That doesn't make any sense. The new update will feature a monthly subscription of $4.95. In the subscription, the user will get added benefits. Uh, on top of the standing offerings, a more robust sound detector, recordings of dogs on entry of unwanted visitors, and an emergency control panel. The hands free emergency panel, run by a third party, will also include emergency numbers. I'm going to get that mushroom. Oh, I do not want this. Oh no! No! I'm gonna fail. All right. Uh, upgraded hunches. Uh, sound detector routines. Uh, these sounds will trigger it whenever. And you know, Amazon Echo. Check it out. <laughs> I got ten. How did I get ten? Uh, let's move on to the Facts of Life game! Woo! We're doing a lot more about it. Are you kidding me? This is race 6. I have to do 10 trivia questions in like 2 minutes. Hello? Alright. Um, hello everyone and welcome to the Facts of Life! Ooh, hello? <laughs> uh, this is the part of the show where we do live trivia on the radio. We've got 10 questions. This is about uh, photos and video of game, con of video game consoles. Oh, uh, what is this? Uh, it is a Sony PlayStation. Can I identify a Sony PlayStation? Okay, cool. Oh, no, we're back. All right. Uh, next, what type of console is up next? Can I identify a... Uh, ooh. Is that... That's an Xbox 360. Cool, correct. Uh, next, I just realized we're doing photos. Ooh. I don't know what that is. It's... A box and it has like a could like a fetish controller. Oh, I'm gonna use this fetish controller. Is that a Sega Dreamcast? Yep, I can identify a Dreamcast. Uh, question four What type of console is up next? Can I identify a, a PlayStation 2? I got a fake item box in eight. Hello, yes, I can identify what a PlayStation. Two is what is that? Oh my god, I can't get this one. This it looks like a safe, but with a like a phone pad on it. Ooh, can I identify what a Mattel Intel Vision is? Yeah! Wow, that was a guess. Hello? Oh my god, it looks exactly the same! It looks like an open face safe. But with a remote, again, can I identify what the Meganox Odyssey 2 is? No, it is... I can't identify what the Color Vision is. Oh my god, this looks the same! Why do all of these early consoles look like they're safes, but with television remotes on them? Hello? Can I identify what the Atari 520 is? Yeah, I can. Oh, I just literally threw that into a wall. Oh, can I identify what the Sega Genesis M2K is? Yes, I can. Uh, number nine, before we finish the race. Oh, yeah, I can identify what the Nintendo DS is. Yeah, I can. And finally, can I identify, yes, what the Nintendo Game Boy Advance is? Oh, my God, that is stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I got an A minus. I got nine out of ten video game consoles correct. Oof. On a short track that is Moo Moo Mellows. Let's get to race seven. We're gonna be talking about an, an astronaut that is voting from outer space while playing coconut more. Are you kidding? You know, Rainbow Road would have been perfect for this. Just saying. All right, Americans. 
This next lady is voting from outer space so you don't have an excuse not to vote for this November's presidential election. I'm off the rails. NASA astronaut Kate Ripkins. Oh, wrong escalator. Plans to cast her ballot from the International Space Station 322 kilometers above Earth, effectively obliterating any excuse why any person earthbound could vote. Oh my gosh, seriously, where did that blue shot even come from? Also, since when did CPUs take this route? Uh, quote, if I, we can do it from space, then I believe people can do it from anywhere. Ripken said in an interview with the Associated Press on Friday. Is that even legal? I hear you ask. Yes, it is. If you live in the fine state of Texas. I'm just gonna do that and literally cut off half the track and then Oh my god, that was a rough. Giving the most US astronauts live in Houston, the state of Texas passed a law in nineteen ninety seven establishing a procedure to allow them to vote when the occasion arose. Ooh. Hello, Walla Luigi. Still my mushroom much? Basically, it works like an extraterrestrial mail-in ballot. Mission Control sends the space station an encrypted email containing the ballot, which is then relayed back uh, to the country's clerk office, sorry, the county's clerk office, wow, not the country's clerk office, who knows, uh, I'm just going to do this, <laughs> trust me, it'll be worth it, um, quote, I think a lot of astronauts do this, Rob Pitts told the Associated Press, it is critical to participate in our democracy. <laughs> I mean, struggle straight. We consider it an honor to be able to vote from out of space. Ripkins is currently working on the Cosmics. Shower. I'm not going to even say that. Preparing for a launch in mid October. After catching a ride on the Russian... Oh, I'm in the grass. This is not ideal. I need to get that box right there, but well, we just got a jacket. No, I'm in a jacket probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, voting from outer space. It's kind of cool, is it not? Like, I feel like... I feel like... Again, if she's voting from outer space, you have no excuse. That, after that terrible of a race, I'm happy to literally get anything. Let's get in to the final race. And again, one of my favorite segments, same as you remember, same as it ever was, on Shy Guy Beach. GBA's Shy Guy Beach. Oh my god, what a way to end. Uh, oh, the intro. Uh, I forget. This is not my show. I can't remember. Same as you remember. Same as never was. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to February of 2001. The NFL Pro Bowl Ola Stadium in Honolulu. Uh, the AFC beats NFC 38-17. Uh, the 4th of February... The first NHL all uh, 51st NHL store games at the Pepsi Center in Denver, Denver Colorado. Oh, hello. <laughs> Excuse me, Luigi. On uh, February 7th, the 31st uh, Berlin International Film Festival. A single red shell in six. Hello. 
Uh, intimacy, one. Which, that's a fun sentence to say out loud, right? That intimacy one. On February 9th, the American submarine USS Greensville accidentally strikes and sinks the Imine Amu, a Japanese training vessel operated uh, by a high school. Uh, unfortunately, it um, some high school students passed away as well. On February 11th, 50th NBA oh, crab. <laughs> the 50th crab. I agree. Uh, All Star game. Um, on February 12th, near Shoemaker spacecraft touchdown in a subtle region. Uh, there as well on February 12th. Tiger Woods wins the golf on February 12th. Uh, the song that you heard, Ain't Nothing About You, it's released on February 13th. An earthquake measuring 6.6 .6 on the richest scale uh, uh, in El Salvador kills about 400. On February 15th, the first draft of the human genome is published to the journal Nature. On February... 18th, uh, uh, 42nd, um, don't know, I don't know, February 21st, uh, 43rd Academy Awards, beautiful day, and she wins, uh, next up, ah, the trolley and destroys two giant Buddha statues in Afghanistan, and I finished 7th. <laughs> What? Hello? <laughs> what a way to end the show! <laughs> oh, what a way to end the show! This <laughs> and stuff! <laughs> oh. My. God. My god, did I work hard for this fourth place? Well, this about ends it for the radio show portion of it. YouTube video, I will see you for the outro. Oh my god, you guys. We did it. We played Mario Kart and did a radio show at the same time. You don't understand. And I want to divulge something right now to all of you. You, you don't understand. I, I've done 10 different attempts at this, and as technical written as it was, I, I still can't believe that I actually, like it actually happened. Like we actually played Mario Kart and did a YouTube video at the same time. Was my playing of Mario Kart the best? Yeah, no, but hey, it was a great attempt I finished. Fourth overall, we had some good races, we had some bad races. My favorite part, my favorite, I think my favorite race overall has to be the, the Pass of Live game in Moomoo Mellows uh, and Headline Roundup and Rainbow Road, like right off the bat. Thanks, Randomizer, you gave me Rainbow Road. <laughs> All right, but that's kind of do it for today's video. Was it a success? I. We did a radio show, the link's going to be in the description below, hopefully. And we did a YouTube video, you watched it, so I would say it's a success. Would I do it again? <laughs> Maybe, if, if I have literally nothing else to do. I would do a video like this again. I would do two things at the same time, but I would have to plan it out a lot better. But... I, I like the concept of having to do two things at once. Uh, multitasking is not my forte and I love the opportunity when it arises that I can try new things and expand on my skill set and that's what's happened today and you've all just witnessed it. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for doing it. If you did enjoy this, please leave a like down below. I would 
more than appreciate it and subscribe too for great content coming your way in October. We're smashing it this month. But if you'd like to support this and everything that I do, you can head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash dalecampbell. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash dalecampbell. D-A-L-E-C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. You can follow my Instagram adventures over on my Instagram at the Dale Campbell. That's T-H-E-D-A-L-E-C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. What's coming at you next? I'm not going to say because last week I said it and I was very confident and it was wrong. <laughs> but whatever it is, we are in this journey together. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.